2015 Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Can we have roll call, please? Mr. Hebert? Present. Mr. Loisel? Present. Mr. Maroon? Here. Mr. Crockett? Mr. Stark? Here. <coughs> Mr. Richard? Okay, uh, just to start right off, uh, welcome James. James Hebert, it's a new member. We're glad to have you. Um, background, you're electrical engineer, you said? Yes. So we've got quite a few engineers. Good. Great. Good. I'm glad you made it. You'll still be a voting member. <laughs> <laughs> no. You don't get off the hook. Um, Mr. Stanhope resigned today. Uh, it was today, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, just schedule-wise, work-wise, just didn't fit his schedule. Um, we appreciate and understand that very well because all of us, at, uh, us it's difficult for anybody to do this. <coughs> Excuse me. So, so we're looking we, just, we're, we are looking for another person if anybody's interested. Uh, the next thing is a stand pledge of allegiance. <laughs> I know what <laughs> pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And uh, do I have a motion on the uh, minutes of May 13, 2015? I move to approve as submitted. Second? Second. Any discussion on the motions? On the minutes? Seeing none, all in favor? That's unanimous. Okay, we're going to jump right in. We have one appeal. This is an interesting appeal. A, um, Mr. Murn, oh, uh, is, is our new member going to be a voting member tonight? Before he did it. Okay. He's a voting member tonight. So um, this is a different appeal than we're used to, so I want to just kind of give everybody an idea of, of what's going to happen. And thank you very much for putting that together for me so I can actually just know, like I, I know what I'm doing. Um, this is an approval for a special exception but it is based under the plan development um, code, section 7E. And this is less than five, uh, this is less than 10 acres, and it allows them to be able to come with both <laughs> items at the same time, correct? Um, it's a development of over five acres, which requires the master plan. But, but they can do it at the same they time? They can do it at the same time in front of planning board, yeah. Okay. So, uh, and just, it's basically designed to look at the overall property and trying to make sure that the use of, is being set up in a, in a way that is best presented for the property. So it's, it was put in 19, I mean, 2007. I've never seen it used, so I'm excited about walking through it, but I'm sure it has been. Um, and I, from the uh, rules, I understand the procedures. You're already saying that this is a complete package. So, because it wouldn't be here for once. It's it's a proposal in front of the, the planning board. Our job tonight is basically to look at the fact that outside storage is a component of their business plan. And on the master plan, they have shown out, outdoor storage as, as a component of the site plan. The, uh, outside storage is only permitted by special exception in that district. And so the zoning board's role in this whole process is to review the appropriateness of outside storage as a special exception use. It can be permitted only by special exception. So we're we're reviewing the, the issue of the outside storage component. And that's the, the only business. piece that's of the puzzle. That's the only piece of the puzzle that is our job to review. Um, and outside storage would be trucks? Uh, outside storage can be... Are the sheds classified as also No, no. I mean, a anything that's under a roof is, you know, okay. a roof and walls is, is okay. But outside storage for them, for example, in this, this proposal that you'll see and in, 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 uh, uh, Lee will get to in a moment is, is the uh, materials that the landscaping business will use to provide its service to, to its customers. And, um, and it can also include things like trailers and pickup trucks and any apparatus or equipment that it uses, rakes, uh, graders, uh, well, you know, any of that type of equipment that it might use in a landscaping, uh, you know, skid steers and, and that kind of stuff. So, you're just trying to impress us with those. People. No, no, uh, <laughs> I never try to impress anybody. Um, 
trying to think of stuff that's not coming to me, but been, that's what about, that's stuff what about that shrubbery? Is shrubbery classified uh, under the same category? Uh, yeah, technically it would be. Yeah. What about uh, uh, what they, the, the mulch? Yeah, that, that's that's the type of material I'm talking about. It's it's going to be bark mulch and perhaps pea stone and things of that nature that they may may use in their landscaping business. Um, topsoil, perhaps um, compost. I'm not really sure, but they've outlined an area in their site plan where that's going to go. And um, it's not so much that we need to concentrate on where it is in the site plan, but whether or not the outside storage of materials <laughs> on that site anywhere is is reasonable. B3. Yeah. Okay. And just uh, last piece of that. It's really a, a fascinating process to try and make sure that you walk it through steps to get the best results. And so we'll start off, uh, we'll start, introduce yourself and we'll go from there. Great, thank you. Uh, members of the board, Mr. Chairman, my name is Lee Allen with Northeast Civil Solutions, uh, representing Go Green Landscaping, Inc. I'm also joined tonight by Dave Molesky, the president of Go Green Landscaping. Could you spell the name first? M-E-L-E-V-S-K-Y. Thank you. Molesky. Hey, Mr. Shall Chairman. You? Yes, sir. May I uh, recuse myself uh, the, to the board that Mr. Allen and I share a uh, board that we sit on together, and I would like the board to know that we have a relationship and it will not in uh, any way change my opinion on the case. I think I can separate myself from it. Actually, that's the same situation with me, uh, and I, it's totally irrelevant to, to, in my opinion, unless somebody wants to vote on it. I'm good. Uh, just so you know, it's the Friends of Scarborough Hockey. Is the board that, that we're talking about? So, everybody okay with? Do you want to vote on it, or are you okay? So, okay, everybody's fine with that. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, the property to be developed is off of Royal Ridge Road, which is um, down by the marsh. Uh, it's directly behind the People's United Bank and the Family Wellness Chiropractic Center that was just constructed about uh, a year ago and diagonally across from the classic flooring building. Uh, the area directly behind or up the hill is, is wetland and it is uh, also there's a subdivision up on the hill that was developed um, from land that was previously owned by Linwood Higgins. Uh, it's Plantation Drive and Fawn Run. Um, our proposed building that you're, you're looking at there on the screen is no closer than 600 feet to the nearest building and in between there's a wetland and uh, a very lush, thick forest. So there's really no chance of this being seen. It's, it's really just the outdoor storage of sand, loam, stone, bark mulch that will be placed on a, a paved surface separated by concrete um, block um, behind the building. Um, you may notice a plan I have has a different orientation on the building. As Brian mentioned, it's, that's something we're working through with the planning board, but irrelevant of the, the orientation of the building. These materials are intended to be stored behind it so they can't be seen from Royal Ridge. Um, and also to further screen, we're planning an arborvitae kind of landscape screen around the edge of pavement. So, you know, in addition to the forest tank, there, there's going to be even a further buffer. So we think that we've met the intent of the zoning to keep this screened and discreet. Um, the business will operate during normal business hours, so there's no, you know, you're not worried about a, a loader in the middle of the night loading a salt truck or something like that. This is all stuff that's going to happen. They're going to load up during in the morning when they head off to a site, and, and maybe offload it in the evening um, when they get back. Um, I think this is a very straightforward and, and <coughs> straightforward request for special exception. The use of um, this type of establishment is allowed under the B3 zone, and with that, turn it over to the board with any questions that you might have. Thank you. Uh, just a couple of notes. That road, as far as I understand it, there's no residence on that road that's strictly... On Royal Bridge? Right. Correct. Correct. It's, all co it's all basically commercial. Right now it's classic flooring and the, the church. Royal Ridge Church. church. And also I guess I give the two other buildings, the, the medical center. Right. And that actually has frontage on Route 1. Um, so it's the, the Family Wellness Chiropractic Center, the People's United Bank, and then there's kind of a vacant lot there, and then it's uh, lumber liquidators is adjacent to that. Okay, great. Uh, so the process we need to go through is special exception. The first round, we're really going to be spending time just walking through questions, and then we'll come back. 
that's that how we should be handling it the same way as the, the same process as if the I could, Lee, could you point out the area on the new design where you've sort of tentatively planned for the outside storage to be just for the board's sure. clarification? So here's this this in shade and gray is Royal Ridge Road. Here is our, our building we previously shown it in this configuration out this way. So the area we're talking about storage is right here. See the screen by the building. Here's the paved surface where our tenant trucks back in, come pick up and leave back this way. These right here are our mighty kind of landscape buffer that we're, we're talking about planning right around the, the paved area. Is there a mic right there, Lee? There isn't. There isn't, okay. Just turn that microphone around if you would. Question for you on that same comment. Where is the church relative to? Church is right here. Church, and that's their parking lot. Okay. Parking. And uh, Route One is horizontal. Right, right here. Yeah, the, the marsh is over here. Okay. <coughs> okay. And the homes up top across there. That's all across. Yeah, this is Scotto Hill. This is Plantation Drive, Bond Run. Um, this area actually long ago was a waste paper site um, that has been filled over. It's and that's why it wasn't developed as part of the subdivision. Okay. Um, did they fix? Did they have any water problems there? That's high. That's higher than you, though. Much right? higher. And there's a wet. The wetland is this area right here. It's all wetland. It, it flows out to the marsh. Okay. So they're higher anyway. So it doesn't really matter. Oh. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Sorry. You started to ask me about procedure. Yeah. yeah. We, I think that, that you'd want to go down through the special exception standards, uh, A through I. Standards and, and discuss how the applicant's answers and responses on the application address those issues. Great. Why don't we take each one separately? We'll talk about that individually and uh, go from there. Mr. Chair, I've yes, got sir. a question for you. Yes. Ron, if that's okay. Sure. Um, there are a couple of questions. What are the volumes that you're looking at storing? Um, a truckload of mulch. Right the yeah. Okay, gotcha. <coughs> yeah, please. And if you could state your name again Thank and you. address. Sure. Uh, David Malevsky, Go Green Landscaping. Uh, typically, um, the type of products we're talking about are mulch, and it's seasonal also. Um, kind of mulch is a heavy product we're using in the spring, and as spring goes into summer, we're pretty much done mulching. What about topsoils? Uh, topsoils, again, that's seasonal. Um, you might do some plantings in the spring and again in the fall, but during the summer, it's typically not too heavy with the topsoil. 40 yards still? Right. Kay. Yeah. Well, topsoils would be more about a 20 to 25 yard Kay. delivery. Same with compost. But you'd um, only have one delivery at a time? Right. Okay. Right. One Kay. delivery at a time, and then mulch typically comes in about a 40 yard delivery. Okay. What about hardscapes, more stones, uh, sand? Right. Occasionally we'll have, if we have a hardscape project going on, we'll have some crushed stone on hand. Uh, it's not something we stock typically for a long period of time. Okay. But if you had them, stones would be, again, maybe 10 to 20 yards? Right. Something yeah, like those that. amounts would be even less. Sand, maybe a little bit more, but... Even, you know, even okay. sand would be, be less. That would be in the 5 to 10 yard okay. area. Any other materials you'd store that would have, uh, this is going towards my next question, right. um, any other materials that you, you would store that may either silt up, sand up, or send a color liquid to a body of water with runoff? No. Okay. No, and even, um, you know, the nature of our business, we do organic applications. Even our um, bark mulches, they're all natural. They're not dyed. Uh, synthetically, so okay. everything we have is natural. But you you will not be required either by the DEP or the town to have silt protection from runoff from a pile of sand or topsoil or anything like that. So so as part of what we're doing uh, through the planning board is our site needs to meet the stormwater ordinance for the town of Scarborough. Okay. That being said, anything that runs off is going to be captured in a catch basin. You've and answered my question. Thank you. Other questions. Uh, so, are you, are you retail establishment, or are you going to be strictly whole, wholesale? You both. So, it's not no nobody's going to be driving in looking for a truckload of of sand. And no, absolutely not. Okay. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, the only people that would really be coming would be customers to view, um, you know, design type ideas and things like that. But uh, any products we have on site would be for us to use for our customers that we'd be transporting from the site to, you know, a homeowner's house. It just surprised me that you'd only need like one truckload of material in each one of the bays. I'm assuming you're going to build Well, you know, it's, um, 
you know, and there's not a wrong answer to that. I just yeah, it's, typically you know we just use it as quickly as it comes in. I don't like to store a lot of it on hand if we don't have to. You know, if it rains and gets wet, it's hard to to move, maneuver, and work with. Um, and our suppliers, they're really, you know, 24 hours within calling them, they'll have it at your site. So it's not a, an issue of being difficult to get. And same thing with hardscapes. Uh, stone, block, that kind of stuff? That t and even those products, typically, we take them directly from the supplier to the to the right. work site. We don't even bring because they're heavy and hard to, to handle. So. Would you be taking the residuals if you didn't use it all? Would it come back to the property and be stored on site? Uh, yes, they could be. But uh, there, again, typically, we try not to have um, too much leftovers due to the cost of them. And, and anything that is left over, a lot of times, we'll send back to the supplier, too. Okay. On that... Uh, you got is it five buildings that you're looking out out buildings is that correct along with it or is that no I think that what you're seeing on this plan is more of the master plan we're just looking at the single building at the 12,000 square foot building okay so that's all that is and then the master plan is eventually going to it's it's just a it's a it's okay. a hypothetical future of what happens if we decide to build this out what would it look like okay so they've got nothing to do with the, so, so are you building like 12 foot high or 12 whatever foot um, Probably five block foot, or whatever. five foot high concrete block, just enough to keep the material so they're not mixed together. Okay. Uh, great. Any other questions? And in the the equipment that you're going to have on the property, you you intend to store all that inside the, yes. the building, and is that going to is there is there sufficient space in there to to meet the future needs, or is this is this just really what you need for today? Um, well, the property is um, designed to uh, house my business, uh, Go Green Landscaping. And, uh, you know, basically in the center of the L-shaped building is where our office space will be. Okay. One 5,000 square foot garage wing is where my business will be, and then there'll be another 5,000 square foot garage wing. So in that other 5,000 square foot wing that we won't be using, I'm going to divide it into three units that will be rental units. And as my business continues to expand, we'll slowly move into those areas. Great idea. Okay. Will those be office space, or will it also be? Um, they'll be directed towards small contractors, so there'll be an overhead garage door along with a small office and bathroom. Yep. So is that similar? Lee, uh, you'll know that those, those little condos that they did down on uh, Washington, that uh, they, they sort of, they're, they're commercial kind. Is that kind of the idea? Yeah, yeah it's, it's about 250 square foot of office space and about a 1,200 square feet of garage workshop space. Yeah, if you have water, the bathroom, kitchen, exactly. shower. No, they may not have a kitchen, but yeah, it's just office be. space and you know shower, bathroom type. Okay. Um, other questions from the board? Okay. So we'll start through the questions on the uh, standards, but then we need there's another layer that will go from there. Okay. So the first is the proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, omissions to the air or water, or other aspects of its design or operation. Correct, yes. And why don't we take each one of these on so we've got a feel, because this is just the, this part here is just the, the exploratory did section, we, right? Did we open a public hearing? We have not yet, but we can. I didn't know if that was... Uh, what order you want us to take that? Well, I open it up now. We'll just we'll stop there for a second. I'll open up anybody from the public that's not here would like to speak. Do you have any letters, phone calls? No. No letters, no phone calls. I'll close the public hearing for it. Thank you for pull it the proper way. So let's go back to the question. Uh, I think you mentioned some things about you're really containing it, and that's all really part of the the planning board process. Correct. It's going to be placed on pavement, separated by concrete block. And the area will be graded such that if it rains out, it can't wash off the site. It'll be washed into the drainage system. Okay. Um, any questions on them on A? Um, no, the only other thing we hadn't addressed was since it's going to be on pavement, it shouldn't be a dust issue. So that'll that'll help from a dust standpoint with vehicles going in and out. Oh, good. Okay. That's a good point. Uh, B, the proposed use will not uh, create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Okay, so in this situation where we're located, there's no sidewalks, there's really no pedestrian use. This is more of, even though it's in the B3 zone, it's more of light commercial use. So just about everybody will get there and, and to and from in vehicles. Um, 
So we don't anticipate any conflict with, with pedestrians. I, I do have one question on that one. Uh, when you go out on Route 1, is there a turning lane between the north and southbound lanes? Is there, there a common turning lane between the two at that point? There is not okay. currently. We have done a traffic analysis. It hasn't been submitted to the planning board yet. The traffic analysis says with the amount of traffic that we're going to generate from this facility that the, the north-south without a turning lane is still okay. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, tied to that, that uh that question. As far as the properties around it, that's all uh, farm zone, right? That's all, all it's zoned? Uh, there is some <laughs> RF zone around it. Um, yeah, our RF is located to that wetland side, that back edge. I didn't think the other side was, was uh, I thought it was all, all RF, but I wasn't positive. Um, to be honest with you, I don't. The only reason I bring it up is because I really don't see any effects on residential homes by this project. So that's really the reason I bring it up. And RF, um, whether or not somebody could build back there or not, I don't know. But it is allowed in RF zone. Something like this would not require a special permit. So I just bring that up for a point of discussion. <laughs> the proposed use will not create public safety problems or should be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require substantially greater degree of municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. So this area will not be ac accessed by the general public. It's for employees only, so that should reduce the safety problem immensely. And the materials stored on site are earthen materials. Um, we um, so don't an anticipate any hazards with those materials. Are you gating it or not? At the, we're not. No. I don't see any reason to, but I just wanted to ask. Anybody have any thoughts, questions on that? No, I don't no see any real issues. Good. Uh, the proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on water supplies. Yeah, I think we've gone over that. It's all paved. It's, it, the only place it could run off if there was any erosion is into a closed drainage system. So that right there keeps it all contained on site. Can you explain just for people to understand what you mean by an enclosed? So, so sure. The downstream of this is going to be a series of catch basins to pick up the rainwater that that runs off of the pavement. Um, there is an existing detention pond on the site that we're going to rehabilitate. So in each catch basin, before it flows out of pipe, there's what's called a sump. It's an area below the pipe where sediment can fill up. So that's where, if anything was to wash out, it would fill into that sump before it would get washed downstream. Therefore, effectively, we're reducing any potential erosion downstream of this. or so really no different than a septic tank? Same idea. Okay. So it's basically just a whatever round bin, pull down low for draining? Yeah, it's usually they're full of water 90% of the time. Okay. Uh, anybody else questions on that? Okay. Uh, yeah, not in the shoreland zone. One corner of the area is, but you don't own that, so it doesn't matter, but see, not in the shoreland zone. Which just nicks the corner of our property. That's there was already a detention pond dug there, in the, and but that's it's. Does it nick it, or does it? Um, I believe it does. Um, I had the. Uh, so when you say nick it, you mean it abuts it? Yeah, it just shows at the corner there. Yeah, right. uh, it's hard to see. The shoreline zone goes across here. Okay. It's set back off of the uh, marsh. And this this shaded area, crosshatched area right here, is the detention pond. So this little bit is actually the shoreline zone. Our development is on this corner. And so we, we'll need to look at the shoreline zoning ordinance along with that because of that. <coughs> um, next, oh, anybody have questions on that? Yeah, the development's out of the shoreline zone, so that's not an issue. Okay. Um, the applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest. And we saw the paperwork in here, so we. That's pretty obvious. And don't say anybody has any questions. Uh, the applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and to comply with all conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to Section 5 of this section. So, in addition to our company, Northeast Civil Solutions, doing the engineering permitting, uh, custom concepts owned by Mike Richmond is doing the building design. It's also a Scarborough business. Um, and I believe there's also paperwork that's been filed showing financial capacity to complete the project. Great. Is he going to build it like he did his, his own building? Because that would be gorgeous. <laughs> Is it really? Yeah. So 
on that. This is just <laughs> this is more for fun than anything. But Mike Richmond builds a beautiful building. That's mine. That's, that, that's the colored rendering of the building. So you notice the garage doors are more of the barn style doors. So. A twelve foot. Uh, ten foot. Ten foot. That's nice looking. Okay. Anybody have any questions on that? And Mike Richmond's a very good. Uh, Proposed use of compatible with the existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to generation of noise and hours of operation. Right. We said that were typical business hours. Okay. Six probably you start, I'm assuming. Typically, uh, typical day is eight hours, 7.30 to 4. Okay. And I did, it, are you going to be doing any winter operations, uh, snow removal and stuff? We do uh, snow plowing in the winter. And in that case, if you're if in, if you're needing to come back for another load of sand, uh, middle of the night, there mm -hmm. might be some operations at that time. Then there could be. Um, typically, uh, we use a, a an ice melt that we typically apply before the storm. So we'll apply before even snow starts to fall. So it's not a, usually a big issue of in the middle of the night going back for for salt or sand. The only time that would probably happen is during an ice storm or something like that where we were under really icy conditions. Okay. Just comments on that? No? Okay. All right, so that's the standards as far as that is concerned. Now let's go to the proposed use to Section C, I'm on. The proposed use will not create public safety problems, which would be substantially different. Is that to repeat? That's a repeat. It is. To repeat. There's something else in here, though. Do we have to deal with this issue here, like a variance? No. We don't have to it's, deal with it's it It's a non-issue. Again, the board's focus now is on the appropriateness based on the A through I criteria, which you just read through. Is the outdoor storage appropriate um, for approval of a special exception use in that zone in this context of this facility? That's really the purview of the board. They can place any conditions on that that they wish uh, to, or that, that seem reasonable, um, or make recommendation for planning board, uh, you know, to that effect. Planning board is going to be digging into the detail of the site design, all of the issues, environmental issues, and siting issues, and, and building uh, uh, design standards for the building, and all of that good stuff. Our review is solely about the outdoor storage use, okay. and so that's really where the focus is. On the vehicle issue, if we don't approve it allowing vehicles, that could be a problem. So do you, are you, do you see at any point you're going to need to have some vehicles that might be outside, like maybe it's a uh, uh, excavator or uh, was it a piece of equipment you mentioned? Skid steer. Skid steer. Everybody has one of those. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think um, the garage space will be adequate to to house um, it definitely what we have currently um, and in the future if we expand into the other side we'd have plenty of room there too. What about so many potential tenants? Um, that you know we'd have to make sure that they didn't have you know storage that was unpermitted um, but I you know I I don't plan on having um, any you know I'm picturing like maybe a, a, a carpenter or a plumber not a big operation because it's not going to be a very big garage space with about 1,200 square feet. I just don't want to have to, if we don't, I, I, I'd rather give you the leeway so you don't have to come back if the board doesn't care and we can find a spot on the site that would allow for vehicle parking. To me, that might help. What about but plows in the winter? We um, plows. Trucks with plows on them, maybe? Um, in, in the winter, uh, yeah, you know, they'd probably be you know, either in the garage space, I would think, ideally, so they're not getting covered in snow. Um, okay. So, 
So I think there'd be adequate room for that. Good. All right, thank you. Um, so realistically, we've heard the presentation as far as we're walking through. I think it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I like the layout. I, I, have you looked at any other locations you could possibly put the, uh, the storage units, and is there, are there any pluses or minuses? We have, and based on the, the master plan that we looked at earlier, it's, if we put it one way, you know, it's kind of facing what potential future development is. You know, by putting on this side of the building between the wetland and the building, there's really not much that can see it from there. I mean, it, it's pretty well screened and out of sight. Um, there, there could be potential for an office in that upper triangular portion of the lot. That, that's, it's down the road, but still, that's why we've got that Arborvitae screen there to, to keep that out of sight. We think no matter what happens there, we've got it screened from every direction. Okay, good. Uh, sewer there? There is water and sewer in Royal Ridge Road. Okay. And it's all underground power? Uh, it's above ground, but I believe we're proposing underground to our, our building. Okay. Other questions from the board? It, is there... Having those, the, the outside storage bins on that right side of the building, is there sufficient room to get around there if you needed to park heavy equipment uh, back there at some point? This is a, kind of a blown up version of that. So, so this is the area we've, we've actually looked at. We have turning tests we can use in, in our CAD program to show you know, trucks backing into each of these spots and, and unloading without without coming close to the corner of the building. And so there is there's plenty of room to get in and out of that area. Okay. And that part that goes straight up, what, what is that? So that's that's a future master plan kind of thing. And same with that building over there. We're just focused on building this portion right in here. Okay. okay. The purpose of the master plan is just to show the potential for the lot yeah. development going forward. They can kind of look at everything to make sure that you're not at this point, uh, they're not limiting the potential of the lot for development, so that they have to come back and do some kind of a, a you know a change. Or, or and that's kind of the concept of it's, this. It's this the whole plan, concept right? because right. it's five acres or more. They want to see how that whole property could be built out. If it's a smaller property, it's not a, as big a point or as big an issue. Actually, it's really basically it's saying, look, let's think ahead. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, make sure we're not putting a building where a road should go. And I think. I think typically too, if the building, sh if the building, if the business should grow exponentially, that also is excess capacity for additional storage, inside yep. storage, and, and that kind of stuff too. So it shows, it shows where things can go on the lot to accommodate the type of businesses that could, could actually co-locate there as well as the growth of that business. Well, I'll just state my position on this. Uh, we can go from there and take a vote. If I think I think the proper, appropriate thing would be to just go back through each of those criteria and just do an up or down vote uh, to, to make sure that everyone's um, on the feels that they've met the criteria, and, and that would go into the minutes then. As that would be great. So that would be a. a, a, a So we'll just run right through these again, guys, and uh, just a, a verbal vote as to how you feel about it, okay? The proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air or water, or other aspects of its design or operation. I agree. All right. Everybody's, I'm okay. Everybody's okay with it? So, okay. And, and if you could just, just quickly state why you're okay with it. Okay. So as I see it, number one, the, the, I like the fact that they've got the draining system that they're using. I like the fact that, that it's going to be driveway as opposed to soft. And realistically, where it's sitting, it just seems to make sense. Um, anybody I want to bring other issues? Up? I'd have to agree with that. I'd also like to add that uh, I think if it were uh, fertilizers and stuff that were being kept outside, that might be a little different situation. But because of the type of materials, I, I think we're in good shape. I agree. Okay. Any other comments? B, the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. I agree. I think it's um, it's pretty clear that it's not going to be a retail location just just for his employees, and I don't think that will 
we'll change things that much in that location. Yeah, I think very limited traffic going in and out of there. Uh, I don't see a, a problem at all with that. I would agree as well. I think the applicant also said that they were doing a traffic study, so that should cover it. Um, I think it's actually probably the best place for a business like this. It's you wouldn't put residences there. Might put a nice rink, but <laughs> not anymore. So <laughs> it is actually let's face it, what we looked at as as a joke for those who are wondering. The proposed use will not, <laughs> uh, use will not create public safety problems, which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree in municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. I'm going to start right down again. I, I agree. I, I couldn't see how that would pose any issues for safety or an excess, you know, stress on the fire or police protection just being a, a uh, wholesale location for a, a landscape business. I think unless they decide to uh, throw some massive parties there, I think we're in good shape. <laughs> I would agree. I don't see anything. I agree. No issue. Um, I don't see that. I, mean, I don't see there's any. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Attractive nuisance that the outside. That was really probably my biggest concern. Is would there be an attractive attractive nuisance? Uh, and I, I bring to reference something like uh, Blue Rock in Westbrook or. Uh, there's another place up on 302 in Raymond, uh, Naples that have a bunch of stones and other items there, but these don't. So I see an attractive nuisance, and I think that's really the trigger of why you'd have the police there. So I'm fine with it. Um, Excuse me. Is there any plan to, to gate access to any of those areas? At, at this point, there isn't. Um, that isn't mean that there won't be in the future, but I don't see the need presently for it, for that. Okay. The proposed use will not create um, results in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on the water supplies. I agree. It seems like they've taken the right steps to, to address that with their drainage and their sump catches. I agree with, it. with the catches. We're good. I agree with catch basin. I agree. Uh, planning board does a great job of managing that. I, that's something I typically don't worry about for that exact reason. Uh, proposed use will be uh, compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. Yeah, I agree. I think it's going to be a nice fit down there. Perfect, fit, like you said, Mark. Perfect, nice looking building. It. Yep, I agree. Yeah, I think especially with the proximity to other buildings, it seems that there's plenty of room in between there, so I, I agree. I would agree with the proximity and everything. I agree. It's a good application for this property. Yeah, I think also the scale seems to work really nicely. Um, and actually, two of those buildings, I think, are metal buildings, and this is going to so be a sided building. This will be a sided building. So it's actually, in my opinion, a nicer presentation. Um, we're not going to deal with the, zone, uh, the shoreline zone issue uh, because we don't need to. The, the application is uh, the applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. And uh, I think we've already determined that's the case. Nobody has any questions of that. Right. Um, the applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this uh, section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to uh, Section 5 of this section. I would agree. I would agree. The applicant's shown that. To me, it's pretty, having a Northeast Civil and uh, your other... Uh, custom concepts. Yeah, custom concepts. It, obviously, you, you're picking people that know what they're doing, and I'm sure it'll come out well, so I'm not worried about that. Um, proposed use will be uh, compatible with the existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to generation of noise and hours of operation. I think he's answered that. Anybody have any questions or any, anything you're worried about with that, that issue? No, I think that the limited amount that, uh, that it would be would be in particular circumstances of harsh weather, um, and I, I think that's, uh, that's an acceptable use of that anyway. Anyway, any comments? No, I'd agree. He's answered the question on when and if okay. they may need to be there. 
I agree, and I think they've also given us conservative hours of operation. I, if they had come back and said six to six, I think that's fine. So. James, I made a mistake in not allowing you to speak with us. We, we typically do that even though you're not really a member. And uh, anything you want, like to say, speak about, talk about, uh, that you know from your experience, or we'd love to get your input. And uh, because of it's kind of back there, I kind of missed you. So it's, I apologize. But of course, in, well, that's in any fine. Meeting, in, in any meeting, uh, non-voting members have the right to have full input. You would normally ask the exact same questions as the rest of the board. Uh, the only difference is that specific vote doesn't count. We'll still ask you to vote, though. Of course. And I, as we're going through these, I agree with each of the items that you, um, have already been described and spoken through. Any concerns or anything that you, you see that should be brought up or something we might have missed? No, not from my perspective. Okay. Thank you. And again, I apologize for that. Can okay. I just clarify on uh, item F, the Shoreland Zone issue? The reason that that didn't have to be reviewed is because the very corner of the parcel where there is no development planned is the Shoreland Zoning area. Right. The rest of the parcel is not in Shoreland Zone. Okay. And unlike the variance appeal, which requires, it says, it that kicks it out. We, we think variance. Yeah, yeah. Not, this is not that. <laughs> this is not that. There you go. So that's not an issue, which is great. Because, uh, all right. So does anybody feel that anything needs to be added, restricted, uh, limited? Do you want to talk? I feel that there's no need to talk about shrubbery. Um, I think they'll handle that just fine over at the planning board. Um, any, any issues, that, anything you think that would be appropriate for your vote? No further comment. No. Okay. Well then, I'll have a move for a motion. Move to approve 2549 as presented. Second. 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 Your choice. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor? That's unanimous. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Great presentation. So. I'm sure it will work well. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, that is the meeting, except for zoning board comments, and also uh, Ms. Longstaff has some things he'd like to walk through. So why don't we start with Ms. Longstaff's. Uh, she promises me we'll be out before the hockey game. Sorry. <laughs> I lied. <laughs> <laughs> So I'd like to make a comment, Mr. Chair. Sure. Um, over the weekend, the, uh, the planning board, as well as some of the councils here in the town, went and did some work down in Higgins Beach. And I'd like to thank the town for the effort that they've made to uh, review that, zo <coughs> that zoning and improve upon it. So, uh, And I appreciate the people from the town and, and uh, uh, people that came that had interest and went to that meeting and also gave input. So. It was a good process, and I appreciate all the efforts the people have made down here at, uh, at the town office, so thank you. Did you go to any of those or no, have any follow-up on what happened at those charrettes? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, the charrettes were, I don't have any of the final products. Um, I didn't get a chance today to review. But it was, um, but it was productive? It was very productive. Mr. Lozell was there for, for on a couple of different occasions um, and had great comments, and I thank you for that. Um, the work sessions were very well attended. The feedback that the uh, consultant team uh, got from the attendees was very, very um, helpful. Uh, for the most part, it stayed on track. Um, we had great attendance from the Higgins Beach neighborhood down there. Um, it was just, uh, we were very, very pleased. And I think that the work products that were developed, what I saw of them uh, before I left on Saturday, uh, for example, uh, some mapping that they were working on. It's going to be just, just fantastic because it's actually going to identify those parcels that have the most restrictive elements coming at them, shoreland zoning and floodplain management and coastal sand dune regulations. And we can actually flag those those lots and, de and start to develop uh, land use, propose, propose land use standards, considerations um, that will really help um, clarify what those folks can do with those properties under the regulations that are currently in place from other agencies, and then the town can work at 
trying to make its ordinances as friendly as possible to the type of development and the, the goals and the plans for the folks, what they want to do with their properties down there without having to continually come back to the zoning board for, uh, you know, permission to do the kind of the normal, ordinary things that anyone would want to do with their property. So I thought it was very, very good. Um, the weekend flew by for my, I don't usually like to work too hard on the weekend, but <laughs> I was there for, for a good bit of it, and um, and it flew by because it was just really interesting, really engaging. Um, it's good to hear. The consultant team, uh, the comments that I got about the consultant team, principal group uh, is their uh, name, uh, was very positive. How they presented the material, how they how they gave folks the options that they could consider, and got the feedback, and sort of kept the discussion on on uh, the topic, and uh, just really good, really good weekend. I couldn't have been more pleased, to be honest with you. That's good to hear. And it's not it, somebody could try try to link this to spot zoning, but this is totally different because spot zoning would be taking something that hasn't been there yet and putting it on there or changing. This is strictly looking at the realities. This is micro. This is micro zoning in essence. Would um, it be more specific? Is that a good way to call it? Yeah, I, I think it's 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 moving away from the type of uh, land use ordinance that we're all sort of used to. That says you got this amount of setback and this amount of frontage, and you can cover. And it gets into a form-based code that gives them more options and alternatives. If you're willing to do this then you can have this, and, and the further back away from the property lines you can go higher, and it just gives them different options, and it's not not as rigid, and um, there's a term I'm trying to think of, and it's, it's restricting me. Yeah, well, it, yeah, somewhat restrictive. Um, it's very prescriptive, you know. So this this form-based code is, is, you know, hopefully with the ideas that they gathered from the residents, it's going to allow them to get back to the character of Higgins Beach instead of, uh, one lady asked, are you trying to force town zoning from other areas onto us at Higgins Beach? And I said, hmm. it's actually the exact opposite. We've been forcing town zoning <laughs> on Higgins Beach. We're trying to create zoning that's Higgins Beach influenced for Higgins Beach. So that's it's a really great question the exact, it was. There. It was a great question. <laughs> and she thanked me for that answer because her and her husband were very very concerned that we were trying to force something that was completely out of character. And I said, you've been living with something that's completely out of character. We're trying to get you something that's more in character with what you're doing. So, it, Does this tie to the, the walkable neighborhood concept? Is that, is that how they're leaning it? It, is that? it definitely respects the fact that it's a very pedestrian-oriented you know, beach community. Uh, most of the residents down there walk everywhere that they go. <clears throat> and it's only the people from outside coming to use the beach that drive in, so yeah, that's that's got to be respected in the whole that whole street view, you know, of of making it a walkable neighborhood and putting the parking to the side and then to the rear of the the buildings instead of out on the street, um, you know, all of those components were discussed and, and parking's a big issue down there. How about the uh, the traffic flow? Did that come up at all? Uh, yeah, I think traffic flow was discussed somewhat, but we were really trying to. We were really trying to focus on the lots, the lot development, and what homeowners could do with their properties. Traffic is sort of, it's, a, it's, a, it's an area that we're not really dealing with in zoning, so. Okay. Any other comments that you got that were uh, sort of unique? Um, nothing that comes to mind right now, but yeah, I just, uh, I just want to reiterate it was a very productive weekend. I think it's going to be a, a good process going forward because of the, the involvement and uh, the willingness of the residents to get involved and engaged. That's great. Thank you for going to that meeting. I wasn't able to. So uh, I don't know if anybody else got a chance, but I think it's great, even that you guys are the, dri the driving force of this. Uh, I think it's fantastic. Okay. Uh, anybody oh. else? Any other board members have any comments or questions? Just comments tonight? I, so. I, know, I just apologize for being late. I had a work commitment that ran a few minutes late. No problems. And I guess it's your show. Okay. Um, just really quickly, um, Karen and I got into a discussion about the minutes from last meeting, and and she um, stated to me that sometimes it's difficult for her to capture when we're going through the decision-making process, what is she supposed to be capturing exactly, and I wanted to just get back to our process a little bit and, 
in making sure that we have a clear process in any of the decision making. And you, you did, a, I thought, a, a good job tonight because you, you read through the criteria, you discussed the answers that the applicant, sometimes we sort of forget to really dig into the answers and read those into the, the minutes. Um, the applicant sometimes does and sometimes doesn't. So Karen's problem is that it's, it's, she's never sure because it's not always the same and we don't <coughs> follow a really good process every time. So it really helps her in creating the minutes, which are the record of the meeting. So if anyone wants to come and say, I wonder how the zoning board came to that decision, they're basically going to find most of the meat of that information in the minutes. So they're, they're really important. And to help her do a, 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 you know, as good a job as she can do, clearly spelling out what the board said and what the findings were and what the conclusions were, we really need to get back to the findings of fact and conclusions of law, which you've all heard that before. And, and sometimes we have a, a tendency to get away from that and, and we kind of, everybody knows what they think, but actually stating it for the record and getting it down on paper is really important. And so I just wanted to remind, I think you all have a copy of MMA's uh, uh, Zoning Board Manual, Zoning Board of Appeals Manual. Yeah. And in there, I think this is on page, well, it's page 62 there, but I don't know the actual page number, 45, I guess, of the of the manual, there's a section that talks about findings and conclusions. And just to remember, you know, the findings of fact are statements by the board summarizing the basic facts involved in a particular application. They could include things like the name of the applicant, their relationship to the property, the location of the property, the basic description of the project, key elements of the proposal, um, so on and so forth. Those are findings of fact, and those sort of need to get into the record. So in the past, and I'm, I'm guilty of that, in the past, to me, the applicant, I, every time I think of the findings of fact, it's basically, it's just this is exactly what you just said. Yeah. So I've always taken that as mm, it's on record. It, it but sort of is because to, it's in the application. Yeah, and you know. so I've always avoided just for, because it mm -hmm. sounded kind of odd to go through that right. page. So are you saying that we should be using that page from now on? Um, well, you should at least be going down through that front, that cover page of the application just to make sure that, okay, so you are in fact, you do, your address is this, you are in fact living there. Um, and that's, you know, just to kind of re more or less regurgitate that, that fact. But where it really gets important is in, in the meat of the, the request, whether it's an appeal or, or uh, tonight it was a special exception approval, you know, those elements of that, I mean, it's pretty easy to pick off their name and, and address and that sort of stuff, but facts also get into the meat of it. Now, can I stop uh, you there for a second? Sure. Because I thought that the findings of fact are strictly the uh, ABCs and the, the conclusions were a separate issue as opposed to no, being... No, I'm not talking about conclusions. I'm still on finding a fact. So finding a fact the way you're describing it, is, which is different than I understood, is... I'm not saying the... Con I'm not getting into the conclusions. I'm not talking about conclusions. No, I'm sorry. Just, just findings of fact, and findings of fact can be statements that uh, evidence submitted by the applicant beyond what's shown on the plan. So it, it can start to hit on some of those things okay. that your conclusions are going to kind of... Um, uh, flesh out in more detail. Okay. okay. So the so the conclusions of law are the statements linking the specific facts covered in the findings to the performance standards that you're reviewing. So, for example, if they say uh, it, it's going to be a, a 5,000 square foot building, and, and so how does that link to a perform? Is there a performance standard that that links to? Or we're going to have 600 square feet of storage area for materials outside. Yeah. How does that link back to that you know, so you're drawing those, you're drawing your conclusions from the finding of fact and from the answers that are presented. It, it's not, you know, it's not so much. I, I don't want to get into too much detail about that. It's just sort of separating those two and then linking them up. You know, you you, you have one process that lists the finding of fact, then the conclusion of law links the findings to what the applicant's stating is how they're answering and responding to those questions. And it's it it's not. You know, it's it's not easy necessarily to do that all the time. But if you just sort of follow that process, um, maybe using tonight's um, appeal as an example, I don't want to 
we've, we've closed <laughs> the meeting on that, so I don't want to go into but But, you know, using that example of how much area is, be, is being devoted to uh, material, outside material storage, in our ordinance, we're not restricting that. We're just talking about the use itself. So is, is the outside storage a, for example, if the outside storage was far more space than the interior of the building, then it might have been a concern to the board to say, you know, it looks like your outside storage is overwhelming the primary use. So you could draw conclusions from that. Um, it, and, and again, just, just making sure that we go through those steps, reading the criteria and what the applicant said, and so the conclusion was, for example, in the first one, that the storage area will contain soil material on concrete blocks and there is adequate, um, adequate paved surface area to contain the materials and adequate, that's, that's your conclusion. They've adequately addressed that requirement. Now, challenge, ask questions, guys, as you go along, but I would think that would be a finding of fact, not a conclusion. If I can add to that, Mr. Chair, like for example, when I was asking the questions about uh, it, you will not contaminate the soil of the water, finding of fact would be they have hard surfaces, They're, they have block walls around all their piles, they have collection basins outside of that. Those were all findings of facts. And your conclusion would be, based on that they have collection ability, that they have addressed it, they're going through the planning board, meeting their requirements, then we can conclude that we will not have an issue and we agree. That, that they'll adequately address those, those okay. uh, when runoffs. Did, when does the trigger, for instance, you asked that question. Mm -hmm. He answered those answers to your, the board's satisfaction. Right. To me, that was part of the findings of fact. It is. Correct. Like when I was asking. But we didn't call it, now we're going to go into the findings of fact. Right, right. Yeah, you know, it's some, in some, some boards have, um, th they have different formats for actually making their decision where they actually separate those I've out. Three. We, yeah, yeah, we don't do that. So it's not necessarily going to be that we're going to say, here's the finding of fact, but if if we clearly go through that process, it's going to be easier for Karen and, and, and along with me after the fact, if we go back and look at them as she's creating right. them, it's, I can, uh, it's going to be easier for us to kind of create those findings. So what it, what it comes on. down to is if this ever, if we ever have an appeal that goes to court, they'll look at our notes and say, it's not that good, let's go to the videotape, right? And the videotape will give them the detail and yeah. ha they'll have to pull the findings of fact and conclusions yeah out of the videotape, so I... That's the only real record anyway. That's, um, I agree. If we formalize it, it would make it easier to have a written document that would make it clear from a legal standpoint. So let me just kind of tie that back. So instead of when I'm, I'm using the term, it, we, we typically go through the process of uh, the applicant gives a presentation. We might get some light questions at that point. Uh, we'll open up the public, close the public hearing, come back. To me, the finding of facts begins when I, when I say, questions from the board. Would mm -hmm. that be the, the trigger? For, is that the trigger of findings of fact? I, th I think the finding of facts actually comes down when you're doing your conclusions. You say, based on these items in the finding of fact, you know, they, you could do they, it they, told, me, they told me that they, had, they were going to have 40 yards of, of mulch, they were going to have 10 yards of sand, 10 yards, and based on those volumes, I believe the runoff will not have the ability but to contaminate since they're collecting it. You know, those are all findings of facts that you say. So I conclude that we're going to be protected. There won't be any waterway uh, contamination because of those findings of fact. But that's going to combine. And right. We've got two problems with that. Number yeah. one, we usually get, yes, I think it's okay. That's what I'm trying to get, that's what I'm trying to get away from. Yeah. I'm trying to get away from, do you think you met it? Yes. Do you think you met it? Yes. Right. Do you think you met it? No. Why? <laughs> right. Why do you think he met it? it? And it doesn't have to be a lengthy explanation. It's just pointing out exactly what Mr. Loisel right. said, for example. Yeah. And I think it's well, be because of the because of the surface area that they're using, the type of surface that they're using, and the containment that they they they're going to design. And the volume they of have taken away the unsanitary and unhealthful condition. Right. Okay. So let's come back to where it crosses up. <coughs> so now I've got. Oh, I'm going to miss the game. So. Uh, <laughs> So the final well, it's it's because of you. You're the one asking all the questions. Well, I make, you're asking all the questions. I know. I'm saying, but hey, you know something. Can we can we slow it down for the chair so we understand? I, I wanted the Bru I wanted the Bruins to win, but it really doesn't matter. Um, so the the way I'm hearing this, and this is where I struggle with the the separations of the two issues. 
when we ask, well, let's just take, for instance, the first, or the, the special exception, whatever the first mm -hmm. one was, I can't remember what the first item is. Uh, closures will not create unsanitary and unhelpful oh. conditions by right. reason of sewage disposal, emissions of air, water, or other aspects of design or operation. If we're going through with that statement, and I usually will go and ask each person what they think, uh, nine times out of ten I get, yeah, I'm okay. I think, we like get, I think we get better answers at the stage of them asking questions before we get to this. To me, and the, the asking questions section is, in fact, the findings of fact. And all of the information that, if we agree with it, that should be on the record. So if, it, if that's the case, though, how do we make it clear for Karen so that I she doesn't what saying. It, make we, 50 items that really aren't applicable? Because well, she's going to have to discern what's right and what's wrong or what's important and what's that, not. That's the problem. There's a lot of good, good discussion that goes on, but it's almost impossible to capture it all succinctly in written minutes. Now, if I sat close to Karen, I could elbow her when it, something it's important, important. Well, said. Here's my right. suggestion, if I might. It, it's just to sort of recap. After that discussion happens on item A, just recap what the findings are. That's that a great way. idea. Okay. That works. And that way she kind of gets that final go through. Okay. It could be as clear as that. that saying the findings from that are material. X, Y, and Z. Going to, you know, so that gives her sort of that recap. And then, then, we then you can go, go, yeah, then you can conclude. You can go right into conclusion on that item right then and there if you want, or you can I come back. To, to I'd prefer to come back. Is this, okay. And I, I think so too, because then each person can conclude on their own. Because sure. if you come up with a conclusion, you're you're concluding for the board, and it really should be each board member saying, well, I don't agree. I think it's still going to be dusty, even though there's paved roads. And as you know, I'll, so then they're, they're I'll making try and their find own something on each one of these things just because of that reason. Yeah. But and that right. helps, too. Uh, and that was really my whole point, is to try to get away from just a, do you think you met it? Yes. Yeah. It, as long as we say why they think they met it, that gives any, any future reviewing authority yeah. is going to come in and say, okay, I see the rationale, how they arrived. And, and Mr. Chair, that's some of the reason why I have diarrhea of the mouth a lot <laughs> is, is because I, I'm trying to get my thoughts out on record so that if it does go to court, then they say, okay, it's only 40 yards of and 10 yards and 15 yards. It's the facts that are going to either hurt us or help us. However, that's at the time that we're asking questions, not when we're doing findings of fact. Correct, but I think you can bring it out either place as long as you say, oh, by the way, that's another finding fact I didn't think about. It, it, but as long as when we're when we flag up an idea that it really is a finding of fact, we just make sure Claren it, it, it Karen's clear that what that's about what it this? is. When somebody believes that something's come up that's a finding of fact, because be, that's a judgment call. Yeah. I'd like to treat that as a finding of fact. Sure. And we discuss that as a finding of fact. There's other things that, that uh, that's a good idea. There's, uh, there's no one way to do this. I mean, I want I want to be clear on that. There's no mm -hmm. there's no this is the way you got to do it. I just I'm, I just want to make sure that the board remembers and understands that that's how your conclusion comes. It's not whether the the applicant's a nice guy or not. Uh, it's not, it, you know it has to be based on your findings. Your conclusions are based on your findings. Yeah. And so as long as you can draw conclusions of law back to the findings of fact. That's all that's important. It doesn't matter how you get there mm -hmm. or what format you use, but, but the other point I was trying to make is that we need to try to make sure that we sort of emphasize what the findings are so Karen can capture that in the minutes and in the conclusions. In, in our forms, you know, our decision forms aren't broken out into findings of fact and conclusions of law, but one thing I could do if the board wants is in my staff comments, I could, I could suggest some of the basic findings of fact from the application you then as a board can verify those through your questioning. I do not want to propose to, to, to find your facts for you. Uh, uh, and I would, I would, I would say, say we, do we, that. That would, we would be on the legal balance beam at that point. I yeah. think if you did that, it would be pushing the envelope. So, that so, you could have so would you prefer that. I not do anything uh, like that? I do. That's fine. Yeah. Like I said, I wouldn't be writing them for you. I could only make suggestions about what the facts are based on the application. Well, I think right now you give us a summary letter going into each case. That's more helpful to you. That's oh, yeah, helpful, and that sense. gives us an idea of what, what okay. you believe is right and wrong. I think that's about as far as you want to go. Yeah. And okay, then we'll form that. our nope. conclusion based on the information. It that's was, that's all. Finding a fact. Everybody agree with that? <laughs> <laughs> we can just take the chair when we have a finding of fact. Oh, 
I, I want to be as helpful to you guys as I can, but I cannot I cannot in any way interfere with your ability and influence to what? come to your conclusions as right. a board. Right. And I don't want to. I, I simply want to help you with your process if I can. And, and as far as I'm concerned, if you see a fumble, you won't offend me by saying, hey, you guys do that pretty well anyway. And we but, we don't care. Really. And, but I mean, chat, if if as we do this, uh, it's going to be a little bit of a learning process to try and design it and get comfortable. So jump in. I know you will. So. Yeah, and I'm not really proposing to redesign, you know, our format. I think if we just if we just concentrate on making sure we give Karen clear clues as to what we're what we you the board mm -hmm. feel are the findings and how you're concluding. How you're coming to your conclusions based on that. That's all she really needs is just clear direction as to what are the salient points yeah. here because the quest lines of questioning kind of sometimes go all over the place. Really don't ever get back to any kind of yeah. finding of fact they might. And have, the, re the reason I think we ought to do it, Mark, when, uh, Mr. Chair, when we are not having the open discussion and when we're going through those items, because then she can say, all right, item one, these are the findings of facts for that. Hold off on the conclusion. We'll come back to it. And then item two, these are the, you know, what do you think? Exactly. You ask me, I'll give you my findings of fact. These guys will give you the findings of fact. And it's real clean f to present it that way. The only negative of that is mm -hmm. that's going to be, because you're going to go down that line. Yeah. We're going to turn around and go with the conclusions, and they're going to say right back to the yes, 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 yes. Well, no, that, that's where I would encourage the board to, to not. You, know I mean? you can say right. yes. That's 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 fine, or you can say no, but why? Just I say why? based on the finding of fact, we've proven that the applicant has met the well, question one. And, and just maybe at that point, yeah. just state a couple of those. Findings. Certainly, certainly. You know what what was the what was the kicker for you to say yes? Well, it was because this. That's all you really need to yeah. do. You don't need to you don't need to list the whole litany of facts. Right. Just the one that for that particular thing that made you say yes. Right. That's yeah, all that, you need. That makes sense. So. I make a fine I make a funny effect. He agrees with me. He says, I agree with Mark. Is that sufficient or not sufficient? Based upon Well, uh, yeah, I mean if he's agreeing with your finding of fact That's okay. That's okay. You, can you stop don't with that. everybody doesn't need to say that same thing. That, that's what I'm yeah, worried about. Right. So so because you'll often do that. But but that is but that yeah, and that's okay. I mean, it's it, I'm not trying to stretch the meeting out to, to another two hours just so everybody can say the same thing, but as long as you're agreeing to what whoever that said, statement whoever started it. of fact was, right. that's that's all we're trying to do here. So, um, so can I decide? Sure. Mm -hmm. So, like, if, if Mr. Richards states a finding of fact and Stark and Crockett and they all agree with him, I don't need to write that that they all. Uh, I can write that they agreed with Mr. Richards' finding yep. of fact. Yep. Okay. Yep. As long as the finding of fact gets written somewhere in there. And right. everyone agrees yeah, like about if that. He yeah. re if he repeats, if Mr. Stark repeats the same thing as Mr. Richards. Because at that point, they're not voting. It's just the finding of fact. Right. Okay. Then, then the, the other key issue is to make sure that we sort of get a all yay, all nay kind of vote on each one of those items, which sometimes we we'll say, yeah, I agree, or I agree, or I agree, and it may not be clear to Karen, okay, did it, was that a unanimous right. vote? Right. Um, so maybe just a, a thumbs up and thumbs down, and then why? Or sometimes you might skip a voting member. <laughs> Just throwing that out there, Mr. Chair. Well, like at the end, when we went back through A through I, and I'm using Mr. Richards because he started, he kept, the chair always went down to Mr. Richards because he started it. But like when it got up here a little ways, people were just at the yes point because they agreed with so Yeah, and that's fine, and that's too. Okay. Okay. As long as they're agreeing to the same for the same reason. If they have other reasons, they should state those those conclusions. Leroy's yeah. in the worst seat for that because by the time those two have spoken, they've said probably what he agrees to. Well, he can change his seat. He can just start with other people. Right. Yeah. 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 Fix it up. Okay. 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 Other comp what else do we need? Uh, no, that's yeah. really, I, I, I can stop I there. I went much better because you were kind of there to. You, you guys normally will hit on all that stuff. Yeah. It's just not in an orderly fashion, which just makes it difficult. Yeah. For her. And so as we were talking through this in the office, I just wanted to try. I thought also because James' first night here, this might be a good discussion for him to kind of get
get to where I've skipped a lot of important stuff at the beginning, but we'll get that. We usually every year will do a training, either Phil Saucy or a town attorney or MMA does trainings as well, which I'll get you a list of any upcoming trainings, and that's Great. really helpful. But this, th that findings and conclusions is really the meat and potatoes of how do you get to that decision, and, and uh, the rest of the stuff is more procedural, uh, Robert's Rules kind of stuff. Right, you know? right. Good, good example was uh, Mr. Loisel bringing up a possible conflict. It clearly was not a conflict because there was no pecuniary interest involved. He was not going to make money off his board, hockey board involvement with. Right. Well, with not the, that you know. But it's That's great right. to bring that <laughs> up yeah. in the interest of. Well, we could have uh, right. tried to sabotage. Right. We could have tried to sabotage it yeah. and stop it. Yeah, we, so, but it wasn't we don't like you right. on the board of hockey, so we're going <laughs> <Right. laughs> right. to. We want that rent. We want that rent. <laughs> you know? yeah. so I, I, all of those kinds of things you'll, you'll, you'll get in the training, which is, right. is important. That's okay. all I'm going to say. I'm going to stop right here. Yeah, we don't want to skip We don't want to skip things. <laughs> Any comments from any of the board? I think we've already done that. <laughs> it's a tough crowd. <laughs> we have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you very much.